Modifying a 5-inch gauge Great Western Railway 14XX steam locomotive. This is part 5, making and fitting brass oiling points to the coupling rods. And as usual, please note this is not a King Scale or Silvercrest model locomotive. This engine was bought directly from the manufacturer in China by me. I was given the job of fitting a new injector to this engine. It came all the way from China to Blackgate's engineering, and rather than send it back, I thought it would be a good idea if I bought it. If you've been watching the series, you'll realise that originally these coupling rods had brass caps in the top, and these were no good for two reasons. The first reason being they were too long and collided with the running board, but the main reason for discarding these brass plugs was that they weren't hollow. There was no way into the bearing for any oil. So I took them out using a pair of pliers and then got rid of them. The coupling rods are held to the wheels by two very large hexagon 6mm bolts. Now I don't like these because it looks like a toy train. I have a double O gauge scale model of this locomotive and that also has hexagon bolts that hold the coupling rods in place but it's very tiny so you don't notice it. But these are huge and they look completely wrong. I did a bit of googling to try and find a close up photograph of the coupling rods on a 14XX. I couldn't find any suitable images, but a very kind viewer called Tommy sent me this, just what I needed. First of all though, it showed me how wrong the coupling rods were, but this is a standoff scale model, and the coupling rods on the model differ in several areas from the coupling rods on the full size. But seeing the photograph will allow me to make some fittings that look a little bit more Great Western like. Don't worry, it's not going to look like this, I'm just checking that it's definitely a 6mm bolt hole. Now it's over to the lathe with a piece of brass in the chuck to make a facsimile of the oilers that are built into the top of a connecting rod on a 14XX locomotive. And these are going to be functional. I'm not going to put the corks in the top of them. I will simulate a cork in the top. And why am I making them out of brass? Well, really this should be steel, the same as the coupling rods. And having said that, the coupling rods are made out of stainless steel, which is a good thing, they're never going to rust but making things of this size in stainless steel to press into the top would just look like I'd pressed a piece of extra stainless steel into the top of the coupling rod. I looked at some other photographs of 14XX locomotives and I also noticed that the coupling rods were fish-bellied. I'll put the words on screen just in case you don't understand my accent. If you have a close look at a fish, the general shape of a fish, not all fish may I add, is thin at the head end and quite thin at the tail end, but quite fat in the middle. And quite a lot of locomotive and steam engine connecting rods and coupling rods are fish bellied. The thicker in the middle, so the middle bit doesn't bend. The connecting rod on the Stuart Victoria that I'm building has a fish bellied connecting rod. This makes it harder to machine, but it's worth the effort. Even though the Stuart Victoria is not a specific model of any kind of engine, at least the coupling rod will not be prone to bending in the middle. I received a comment from a viewer who was asking me if I'd stopped the Stuart Victoria build or was going to carry on with it, and he was quite indignant. And what I have to say to that viewer is, f f f sorry about the stutter, is f f for now, the Stuart Models Victoria build is temporarily on hold because I've got plenty of other jobs that are paid jobs and I need to get them out of the way because that's what pays the bills. Besides which, I originally said I was going to do one episode per month. But initially, I did more than that. So, if you're following the build of the Victoria, be patient, it will be completed. I did consider putting the Victoria build for Patreon subscribers only, but then, that would not be fair to the people who send me donations using PayPal. So don't worry, I'm definitely going to carry on with it, but for the moment, I'm busy making these small oil cups for the 14XX locomotive. And once I made the first one and put it in the top of the coupling rod, yes, I think this looks quite nice. For me, this is mass production because I have to make four of these. As the first one that I made, the prototype, looked okay in the coupling rod, it was simply time to make a few more. Three more, in fact. I'm not going to show all of it in its entirety because it's too boring, I'm sorry about this. But here's a brief description of the process anyway. I put a piece of quarter-inch brass bar in the chuck, centre drilled the end, and then drilled it all the way through using a number 44 drill. First of all, I used a round nose tool on one end to get the shape. Then I turned it round in the chuck, and this is the part of the job that I'm currently doing. I'm machining the other end to fit into the coupling rod. I don't need this component to be a very tight fit in the hole in the top of the coupling rod, because I'm going to fit it using some Loctite type retainer. You will notice that I'm using a parting tool as a turning tool, and I do this quite a lot. A few viewers have told me that I should grind the parting tool 
at a slight angle so that as it parts the work off the piece comes off cleanly. The problem is, as you can see here, I often use this parting tool as a turning tool and if I shape the end of it as the viewers describe, then it would turn a nice little taper. In this clip I'm cleaning the part up with some emery paper and here are the four pieces that I've made. And they all look pretty much the same to me. So now it's time to fit them to the coupling rods. But before I do, the coupling rods need degreasing. So I'm using some cellulose thinners for this, or lacquer thinner as you call it in the USA. And this will get rid of all the oil that's accumulated around the bearing. I'm using a cotton wool bud to clean out the oil hole. And now it's time to use some of this. This is a Loctite 603 equivalent, it's called Bond Block. And it seems to be fine. What I'm doing though is tipping some of it onto the bench, then I use a screwdriver point to apply a very small amount to the part of the brass oil cup that fits into the coupling rod. It's easier doing it this way because you can get a more precise amount on there. For larger components, I would use it direct from the bottle, but for parts that are this size, this is the way to do it. These kinds of retaining compounds are called anaerobic adhesives, and the reason they're called this is because it is the lack of air that activates them. After removing the surplus adhesive from the outer edge of the brass component, I tap it into place with a soft hammer, and in exactly the same way, even down to using the hammer, I fit the brass part securely into the end of the coupling rod. In this clip I've turned the engine round on the bench so I can get the coupling rod off the other side. And in exactly the same way as I did on the other side, I put a small piece of hardwood between the spokes to stop the wheels from rotating. It's perfectly okay to put a piece of wood through the spokes, but if I was doing a much heavier job, I would most probably find a different way to secure the wheels in position. I'm really looking forward to getting rid of these large, ugly hexagon bolts. Anyway, for now, back into the cellulose thinners to clean off all the grease. Same principle, use a cotton bud to go down inside the oil hole, and then apply the Loctite 603 substitute, and the same way as before, tap the part into place using a soft hammer. With all four of the brass fittings secured firmly in place, it's time to refit the coupling rods and I'm refitting them for the moment using the large hexagon bolts, but I will be changing these in due course. Once again, the piece of hardwood through the spokes locks everything in place, well, more or less. You will notice that I'm just nipping up these bolts. It's very important not to over-tighten them. That's one side done, now for the other side. In this clip I'm just checking that the oil cups don't foul the running boards because the previous ones did. But these don't, there's plenty of clearance. But to be doubly sure that it's okay, I'm running the engine currently at a nice slow speed just to make sure that there's nothing fouling anywhere on the system. You'll see the engine start to wobble about in a minute, that's because I'm putting a lot of pressure on the top of the engine to simulate the boiler and the tanks being full of water, and I'm also rocking the engine from side to side to simulate it going down the track. And as you can clearly hear, nothing is knocking, which is far better than it was originally. So that's about it for this episode. As usual, I'll leave the engine running for the closing part. So thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.